2021 is upon us and in today's video i wanted to go over my camera bag going into 2021 let's jump into it what's going on guys welcome back to another video so video number one for 2021 is going to be my camera bag and what's in it for 2021. I'm also gonna be bringing up a couple things I wanna add to my bag. But first, before we get started on this, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more. Also, I'll have all the stuff I talk about linked below in the description. So first up is the bag itself. I have the Endurax drone slash camera backpack. I got it on Amazon. And for the price of this bag, this bag has been phenomenal. It has completely exceeded my expectations, and so far it is holding up surprisingly well. As a landscape photographer, I'm pretty rough on backpacks, and for the price point of this bag, which is right around $100, I have been very, very impressed. I did do a full video review of this bag, so if you're interested in it and you're in the market for a new camera backpack, Definitely be sure to check that out. I dive into all the details on it. So be sure to watch that one after this one. So as far as the cameras I'm using, I am still using my two Nikon Z6s for both my landscape photography as well as video. Now I know the Nikon Z6 2s are out. I did look at them and I contemplated replacing my Z6s, but the differences just weren't there for me yet um, to upgrade. Uh, I'm more than happy with my Nikon Z6 first editions. The video quality for me is completely fine. The picture quality is more than enough for me too. So until something better comes along, I'm going to be sticking with these. Uh, the Nikon Z6s have been my favorite cameras I've ever owned, so no sense in replacing them yet. So on to the lenses. So I've been slowly getting rid of all my F-mount glass and slowly trickling over to switch into all Z mount. If you watch my videos, you know I'm a huge fan of the new Nikon Z mount glass. I've had nothing but good things to say about it. And with that said, the only F mount glass I have left is this really shitty cheap 55 to 300 lens. It's a DX lens. I do not use that much because honestly, it's like a disgrace to use on a Nikon Z6. But surprisingly, I have got a few pretty decent shots on it, and I am in need of a new telephoto lens, so I still do keep it in my bag and use it for things like moon photos and stuff where I'm lacking Z-mount glass for. But I am looking at getting the 70-200 to f2.8 S lens for the Z-mount, and eventually this year I definitely will be getting that and I'll be doing a full video review on that as well. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, and if you do have that lens, be sure to comment below and let me know what you think of it. Uh, I love to hear what you guys think about stuff like that. So be sure to comment below. That's definitely top up on my priority list though. That's, that's definitely a lens I really want. I'm due for a good telephoto lens and that one's really sticking out to me. Next up, I still do have one 24 to 70 f4 kit lens uh, last year i did have two but the other one i actually ran over with my truck i actually ran it over on one of my z6 bodies too luckily the z6 body was okay and the lens took the brunt of it so just a little tip there if you got your camera and you've got to put your child in the car seat don't set your camera on the back tire it's a very bad idea as far as prime lenses go, I have a couple of them. First up, I have the 50 millimeter F1.8 S lens for the Z mount. Uh, I've talked about that lens before. That is a ridiculously sharp lens. I love that lens for just, you know, taking pictures of my kid for portraits. And then um, you can get some pretty good compressed landscape photos and, and also just food photography and stuff like that. I also recently got the Viltrox 85 millimeter F1.8 lens for the Z mount. And that is actually the first third party lens for the Z mount that offers autofocus. Uh, Viltrox did send me that lens to review. So coming up, I will be doing a full video review on that lens. And so far, I've been pretty impressed with it. Lastly, for the lenses I have as of right now, my favorite lens, the 14 to 24 f2.8 S lens for the Z mount. Uh, this is relatively new lens. It was just released 
uh, like two months ago. I got it right on the release date. I love this lens. Uh, it's my favorite, favorite lens for landscape photography. I've gone over it a couple times in a couple different videos. I do have a full video review of it up here. Watch that after this video if you're interested in it. It is a great lens for landscape photography and one of my favorites. I'm actually shooting the video on it right now. As far as my drone goes, I am using the Mavic Air 2 drone. I've had it for a few months. Uh, it's not my favorite drone. I actually preferred my Mavic Pro original one. Uh, I definitely preferred that drone over this one. It's getting me by as far as my aerial photography goes, so I'm gonna stick with it for now. Unless I find some really great deal on the Mavic Pro 2, I might sell it and get that, but as for now, as much as I use my drone, I'm gonna stick with the Mavic Air 2. For tripods, which is a very important part of landscape photography, my main one is the Manfrotto 055. It's my favorite one for landscape photography because it's just super sturdy. Um, I honestly don't even have to use a shutter release button on it. I can just hit the shutter button on it and I feel confident enough where it's sturdy enough, it's not gonna shake the camera. Uh, the trade-off to that is it is very, very bulky and cumbersome and it's pretty heavy as well. For my smaller hiking tripod, I have the Zomi. I hope I'm saying that right, but I'll link it below in the description. It, it folds up really small. It's super cheap for a tripod and it gets you by if you need the tripod on a long hike or you need something that doesn't take up a lot of space or weight, uh, but it's definitely not one I'd recommend for like a main tripod for a landscape photographer. I'd get something a little bigger. But it does fold up super small and I can put it right on the side of my backpack and barely even notice it. I also do have a Gorilla Pod that I very, very rarely use. Couldn't tell you the last time I used it, but I do have it. Just in case I wanna do like a vlog style video at some point, it does stay on the other side of my bag and it's there if I need it. But I mainly keep it because my kid basically likes to just play with it. As far as accessories go for my photography, uh, I do have two L brackets on each of my Z6s. I highly recommend L brackets for your cameras, no matter what style of photography you do. For the price, there's just so many advantages to them. Firstly, it does really protect your camera bodies. So for such a small investment on an L bracket to protect you know, a thousand plus dollar camera body, I highly recommend them. Plus for landscape photography, being on a tripod, it's very, very convenient to just switch it over to portrait style shooting from landscape mode. And in my bag, it's just a must have for my camera bodies. I'll have the ones I use linked below. It's really, really budget friendly one. Uh, I think I got them for under 40 bucks, which is pretty cheap for an L bracket. Uh, if you get into like the name brand ones, they're upwards of over a hundred, which I just, I see no point in spending that much money. You're just paying for the name at that point. And these ones have worked great. Next up is another must have accessory for me for landscape photography, and that is ND filters. Um, I recently just got the Nissi ND filters and I did recently just make a video on them, a full video review of them. Those have been hands down my the favorite filters I've used. Uh, they're super neutral, but if you're interested in that, if you're interested in getting ND filters for your photography for long exposures and stuff, you can check them out. I'll, I'll link that video up here that I made. Great filters. Highly recommend them. Uh, and just, I love doing long exposure photography, so that's another must have for me to keep in my bag. Uh, a headlamp is another thing I keep in my bag. I tend to do a lot of low light photography, especially during the summer months. I do a lot of Milky Way shooting, so obviously a headlamp is a must have that I have to keep in my bag. I do have a bunch of different headlamps. For a smaller headlamp, I, re I recommend this Milwaukee one. It's just small, it takes three AAA batteries, and they last quite a while. For a rechargeable one, I recommend this one. I got that on Amazon, um, and when you're done using it, you can just plug it right in, recharge it. That one is a little big due to being able to recharge it. And then outside of the 70 to 200 F 2.8 lens I wanna add to my bag, I do wanna add a macro lens. Uh, I'm not sure if Nikon Z mount has released a lens for that yet. If you're aware of that, let me know below. Uh, but with that said, I might still have to keep my FTZ adapter and adapt like a um, older macro lens to this. But I definitely would like to get a macro lens just for closer up detail videos. And uh, I would not mind trying macro photography either. 
I've always kind of been intrigued by that and would like to take some photos of that too. I've been also contemplating getting the 20 millimeter f1.8 lens for astrophotography. Uh, that'll probably be a couple months down the road just because Milky Way season is not here right now. But if I do find a good deal on that, even used, I would love to pick that up to add for astrophotography as well as video. That would be another nice prime lens I'd like to add. So I'm sure I'm forgetting a few things, but definitely if you have any questions or recommendations, definitely leave a comment below. I love reading the comments. I usually answer to all of them. And definitely in 2021, I'm definitely making it a bigger priority to put out more videos um, and up my YouTube content. So definitely be sure to subscribe for more. Hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you in the next video.